What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Mark Alvarado back here with another episode of the Signal Sportscast. Today, we're going to be talking about how the Astros' potential postseason matchup is going to be between the Toronto Blue Jays or the Seattle Mariners. The Rockets also started their season with some preseason action against the San Antonio Spurs, and they play again this week whenever this episode goes live. The Texans are the only winless team in the NFL at the moment. We'll dive into that as well. And we're also going to add a little bit of wrestling action with WWE talk and AEW talk and a bunch of more stuff. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into it. The Houston Astros finished off their season this week against the Philadelphia Phillies. They ended up winning the series two games to one, and they end their season with 106 wins and 56 losses. Now, during this time, the Astros did clinch the AL best record in their in that division. Uh, they currently await the winner of the wild card round between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Seattle Mariners. So the winner out of the Blue Jays and the Mariners will go on to face the Astros in the ALDS. It's been quite some time since the Blue Jays have been in the postseason, and the Mariners just ended the longest drought in sports history at the moment with this playoff appearance. The Mariners have not been in the postseason since 2001, and that barrier was broken, so it belongs to a new team. Now, if you're a Houston Astros fan, you're probably thinking to yourself, who do I want to face in the ALDS? Do I want to face the Toronto Blue Jays? Or do I want to face the Seattle Mariners? Now, there's pros and cons to both teams. And I'm going to start off with the most interesting matchup, I believe, to myself. Could be a really good matchup, you know, entertainment-wise for postseason ball. And that would be against the Toronto Blue Jays. In the season series, the Astros and Blue Jays faced each other six times. Three here in Houston and three in Toronto. Houston only won two games against Toronto out of this whole season series. So, the Blue Jays did take the season series so that could be alarming plus they have vladimir guerrero jr bo bachette george springer in the outfield alec manoa is a pitcher that's on a roll right now for the toronto blue jays so there's going to be a bunch of factors that go into the series now the biggest pro i have against going against the blue jays is the Blue Jays have little to no playoff experience. The young core that they have of Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, Calvin Biggio have not made the postseason, a real postseason, to be honest with you. The only pe- the only person I can give insight to is probably George Springer because he has the postseason experience against the Astros. But then again, times change and things change a lot. So we could see... A potential matchup with them cats then we flip to the other side of the coin and we go to a al west division rival the seattle mariners now the astros and mariners love loss is uh pretty big if you catch my drift on that there's been a lot of stuff going on between these two teams and the astros and mariners did face off quite a bit with each other the astros ended up taking the season series against the mariners so the astros are pretty dominant against the Mariners. The Mariners have Mitch Hanniger, Julio Rodriguez should be making a return to the lineup. And there's a whole bunch of other cats on that team that can make this a really fun series. Now, if you want the easy way out, I would say going up against the Mariners would be our best bet. The Astros, again, won the season series against them and also know how to play Really, really good baseball at T-Mobile Field in Seattle. Pitching rotations is soon to come. Nobody knows how that rotation is going to look like. I don't even think Dusty Baker knows at this point. So we can only sit back and really watch this weekend's series against the Blue Jays and the Mariners. The Blue Jays had the better record against the Mariners. So they will have home field advantage in the wild card round. And like I said, winner of that gets the Astros in the ALDS. Now, after the ALDS, we have the ALCS, and after the ALCS, it's the World Series. So, you got your Conference Series, Divisional Series, and then the World Series. So, the Houston Astros, man, they're very, very interesting postseason. One of the best teams they've had in franchise history was this season. As far as pitching, I feel very confident in the pitching, very more comfortable than last year's pitching matchup that we had in the bullpen and so on and so forth. A lot of y'all be expecting some starters to be coming out the pen for relief. 
I see a four man rotation going with uh, Dusty Baker and his crew. The four man rotation I see that the Astros could potentially have is Justin Verlander, Fromber Valdez, Lance McCullers, and Luis Garcia. You got Jose Arquiti and Christian Javier coming out the pin for relief and as well as your bullpen. As well. And what I mean by that is the regulars in the bullpen that had a really good season. Ryan Stanek had the lowest ERA, so he had a pretty good season as well coming for relief. Ryan Presley, I'm still not sold at him being the closer, but you know what? It's postseason. He's going to step up his game. I believe in you. Yeah, I'm just going to stop myself right there. But I have nothing against Ryan Presley. He's just not a closer in my eyes. But he's probably going to be shutting it down as well, handling business. And a lot of other pitchers in that pen can really make this postseason really, really interesting. So that's all I got for the Astros other than sit back and watch. Because like I said, with having the best record in the American League, the Astros do clinch that first round bye, which is technically the wild card, and they are the number one seed in the American League, meaning they have home field advantage throughout the ALCS, the ALDS, and the World Series as well, because if they were to make it, knock on wood, that if they do make it, they do get the World Series home field advantage because the American League did win the All-Star game this past year at Dodger Stadium. A lot of stuff can really go in at hand. A lot of stuff can happen in October. It's postseason baseball. It's a whole different season. Whole different season. Every pitch matters. But leave me whenever I say that. So to the winner of the series between the Blue Jays and the Mariners, be prepared for a good-looking Astro squad that's ready to contend and to make y'all work for everything y'all have. That's a wrap on Astros talk. Let's dive in on the Rockets. The Rockets tipped off their season with some preseason action against the San Antonio Spurs on October the 2nd here at Toyota Center. They ended up taking the win 134-96. to Your top performer for the Rockets was Tyree Eason with 21 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, and 1 block. Just to go over a little bit more, people, Alfred Sangoon started at center. He played 20 minutes with 13 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists. Kevin Porter Jr. with 9 points, three, 2 rebounds, and 6 assists. Played in 20 minutes as well. Eric Gordon played 16 minutes and scored 13 points, had 2 rebounds, and 2 assists. Jalen Green with only 7 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists. And Jabari Smith Jr. with 21 points. 8 rebounds and 2 assists in 24 minutes. So again, it's only preseason action. The Rockets do face the Toronto Raptors this Friday, October the 7th. They will be here at Toyota Center. So just keep your eyes on that. There's a lot of basketball left to be played, ladies and gentlemen. So I would not be sold on the Rockets, either contending or not contending. It's just preseason. It's too early for these thoughts that we may have, but... Again, it's only game two of the preseason that's happening on October the 7th at 7 p.m. here at Toyota Center. A lot of people are asking, what's going to be the rotations like and is the Rockets going to make a move to get anybody at center? At the moment, the Rockets are really sold on Afrin Singoon running the five. I don't know how I feel about that personally because I feel like he's a little bit undersized, but he is pretty wide and his footwork underneath the basket is pretty good. He has very good fundamentals down low. He could take anybody he wants in the post. We might see. Who knows? Really, like I said, it's very, very early into the season. It's only preseason as well. So let's see what happens. On to the Houston Texans. The Texans are 0 3 and 1. They have a tie from week one, and the rest have been losses from this past season, these past couple of weeks. And to be honest with you, I am not surprised at all. A lot of Texans fans have given up already on Davis Mills. And like I said, from the very beginning, I really did believe that Davis Mills was not the guy to be QB1 for this franchise. But hey, that's what happens when Jack Easterby takes over your team. It is what it is. And ain't no going back. The Texans really don't have anything going for them at the moment. Uh, Lovey Smith has reiterated a whole bunch of times that Davis Mills is his quarterback and they're going to roll with that. Hey, y'all str- if y'all struggling... Makes get y'all somewhere more power to y'all, but it ain't getting leading nowhere to wins. Okay, so here's my thing you have something in Davis Mills, apparently, you do. I don't know what they see, but the numbers aren't there to back it up. 
yes, you're in these win winnable games, but you can't secure the deal. Why? Because your quarterback doesn't know how to properly dish the ball out with under two minutes left on the last drive of the game when you're trying to get a score to win. Now, on the flip side of the ball, the defense is outstanding the corners are looking really good the linebackers are looking good everybody's looking good on the on the defensive side Jalen Petrie really is making his presence known that's a really good sign for the future if they can build around him it would honestly be pretty good for Texans nation moving forward I really don't know what the Texans are going to do as far as how they're going to get a win and how they are going to perform if we're being 100% honest here, uh, the Texans aren't going to do nothing. If anything, they'll probably lose out the rest of the season so they could try to get the number one pick. That's my analysis on that. It sounds about right, to be honest with you, because they have winnable games in their schedule. They're just choosing not to go all out, to be honest with you. So just to run you down all these scores that the Texans have gone through, week one, they've faced the Indianapolis Colts. They ended up tying with them 20 to 20. Then week two, they had a loss against the Broncos in Denver. Week three, they lost to the Bears in Chicago at the last second, thanks to a field goal that the Bears made. Then this past Sunday on week four, they faced the Chargers here at NRG Stadium and would have lost 34 to 24. But the thing is that they were within scoring range to overcome the Chargers to take the lead, but they didn't. So the rest of the schedule plays out as this. Week 5, it's against the Jaguars. Week 6, it's a bye week. Week 7, they go to Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada, a.k.a. the Death Star, to face the Las Vegas Raiders. Week 8, they go against the Titans. Week 9, they go against the Eagles. Eagles are currently 4-0, only undefeated team in the NFL. Keep that in mind. Week 10, they go against the Giants. Week 11 versus the Commanders. Week 12 against the Dolphins. Week 13 against the Browns. Week 14, they go against America's team and the Dallas Cowboys. Week 15 against the Chiefs. Week 16 against the Titans. Week 17 against the Jaguars. And week 18, they face the Colts. Again, there are winnable games in here for the Texans, everybody. Very winnable games. But my thing is, are they really going to compete to win these games, though? Because if you're a team in the NFL and you're not competing to win, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing? Don't waste everybody's time and money that they can potentially be having and saving on a Sunday afternoon or Thursday night or Sunday night or Monday night, whenever football is being shown, don't don't act the fool. Get a win. Compete. But, hey, I guess that's that football feeling the Texans give whenever it's their season. Couldn't be me, y'all. Could not be me. Texans, good luck with y'all. Now we go into wrestling. I bring in the Signals reporter, Adon Martinez, for me on this segment. Adon, how are we doing today? I'm doing great, and you? Oh, man, we're doing fantastic, fantastic. We can't go wrong with some wrestling talk. No, we cannot. Let's talk about what's coming up for so, this week. So the WWE is hosting their annual Extreme Rules pay-per-view matchup this Saturday. Um, your thoughts on WWE having pay-per-views on Saturdays now? Yeah, I think it's a... Uh I think it's a good thing you know I don't, I don't mind weekend matches or anything you know it's everyone's off you know everyone has a has a time to go watch them so you know i don't really mind saturday or weekend matches to be honest i'm so used to the sunday night card and all that other good stuff but i mean if their ratings are getting better than you know sunday night football and other stuff that's happening on sundays at this time i mean hey you got to do what you got to do because I think AEW took over that Sunday night pay-per-view matchup slot. Yeah. So and you need something, you know, to bring in more viewers right now because, you know, it's already in the fall season. You know, you got football coming up and everything. So, you know, and Triple H, you know, since he's taken over. And that was that's what I was going to ask you, actually. How do you feel about Triple H? taking over creative in the wwe i think it's good triple h you know and he's someone who understands the industry really you know you look at his history he was someone who you know he's the game the <laughs> cerebral know? assassin he knows how to he knows how to play the game and you know it's and nobody wants to play the game yeah you know he's 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 an old-fashioned wrestler and you know, i think he really respects the industry you know I'm, I'm not saying vince didn't respect it i just think that he kind of look i love vince mcmahon i really do admit everything that that's going on in his world right now that man 
made people's childhoods. He, he did, you know, but I think he kind of... He was in over his time. Yeah, you know, he was kind of... Towards the end. Set his ways, you know. He right. just kind of felt like, ah, oh, I'm going to do this, you know. He was, he was the boss, you know. And Triple H, I think, is just a, a fresh start you know it's oh for sure and you could see there's a whole bunch of more clarity on the superstars that are performing on raw and smackdown the commentators seem a little bit more laid back now because triple h is telling them hey man ease up mm-hmm. you're good where you're at just you know let, we're gonna let things we're gonna let things slide here a couple yeah. times to make it more entertaining because at the end of the day that's all it is it's entertaining yeah. professional wrestling is entertainment yeah, can, now say wrestler now exactly <laughs> they could say better Belt. All right. You, I mean, they weren't allowed to say that on WWE TV when huh. Vincent Kennedy McMahon was, you know, taking over the E. Yeah. But th- times change, things change. Here we are today. Yeah. So now we're at a point in life where we have two major companies again, AEW and WWE. Mm-hmm. AEW is a really, really big comparison to WCW as of back in the day. I never watched WCW. I wasn't. I was a baby whenever that was going on. Mm-hmm. I was born in '99, yeah, okay. so I really wasn't. I'm not really too too familiar about how everything had went down like that mm-hmm. at that time. But I, based on everything that I've watched, documentaries, mm-hmm. you know, interviews, so on, so forth. They say it's pretty similar to how it is right now. And and AEW is so young Mm -hmm. at this time that they're already experiencing a lot of problems. Like All Out, for example. What was it? A couple weeks ago? Mm -hmm. CM Punk got into that fight with the Young Bucks. Hangman Page. Or not Hangman Page. uh, Kenny Omega as well. Mm -hmm. Look, he's getting into fights with the executive uh, vice presidents. And I think Kenny Omega is part of that front office staff as well. They're all suspended. They all got stripped of their titles. Yeah, speaking publicly too about it. You know, they're bringing their their arguments and their grievances out in the public and everything. You know, that's you would expect. That's kind of something backstage. You deal with the you deal with that. You know, behind closed doors, if you have something wrong. But you know, that's kind of shows that their problems are kind of spilling out into the public right now. And rumor has it is that everybody is trying to jump ship to mm-hmm. WWE now. Yep. When in reality, a couple months ago, it was switched. <laughs> yeah. People wanted to leave the E to go to AEW. Yeah. Now everybody wants to go leave AEW to come over here. I get that. Or not over here, but like to, you know, WWE. Yeah, that, so, it's like, you know, Cody Rhodes came back WWE. That was I big. I think WrestleMania. That was they did that perfectly. I, I feel like I think that's why a lot of people are saying, "Oh." Now, do you think Cody left because he foresaw everything that was going to happen? I that's I I think so. A little bit, yeah. You know, he was behind the scenes. He worked with Tony yeah, because he was part of that front office. Yeah, he worked with Tony Khan and everything, so he might have had it. But then again, a lot of people know. don't like Tony Khan. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people do not like Tony Khan. His mm-hmm. father works for the E, though. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know how their family dinner is at that night, but it is what it is. But on the topic of the E, they do have Extreme Rules this Saturday. Let's go over this fight card right quick. Gotcha. So the card is as follows. I don't know the exact order of. You know what the main event is or whatever but we're going to start from bottom up the brawling brutes versus imperium and it's a six-man tag team match then we have edge versus finn balor in an i quit match drew mcintyre versus Karrion cross in a strap match matt riddle versus seth freaking rollins inside the fight pit with special guest referee daniel Cor- Corrier. I don't know if I mis- no. I mispronounced that. I You're butchered that. I am so sorry. <laughs> I am on one right now. And then we have this uh, Raw Women's Championship ladder match between Bianca Belair and Bailey, and the SmackDown's Women's Championship match, Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey in Extreme Rules. Now, rumor has it, uh, belt's going to go on Rousey. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm not really all into these big names from like boxing and MMA coming in, you know, and getting getting the belts just because of their name, you know, but she's been there for a while, you know, and yeah, she has said some things about <laughs> about wrestling in the past, you know, that might have rubbed people the wrong way, way, you know, but I think she's, you know, she's earned her spot, so, you know, I, I maybe she might win, who knows? Okay, so it's, for me personally, I would go with I wouldn't want her to win because mm-hmm. 
I feel like she's the Brock Lesnar of the women's division, part time. Well, she's yeah. earned that spot, you know. She's. You think so? I mean, yeah, she's. You got Liv Morgan that literally scratched and claw her way up the ladder mm-hmm. because she went from beginning of the show, mid card athlete, uh, athlete to, you know, main event star and champion, mm-hmm. literally. Then you have somebody like Ronda Rousey come in, who's only there on a part-time basis. She's only there for whenever the ratings seem to be up, and she's only there when big pay-per-views are around. Yeah, but that's what they kind of need. That's you know? the that's business. The, yeah, I guess that's the business that's aspect at all. You know? I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't have nothing against Rousey. I just don't want her. I just don't want a championship to be gone the whole year, like how Brock Lesnar used to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. You know, a couple yeah. years ago, where you know we didn't see the yeah. WWE <laughs> World Heavyweight Championship for months Mm -hmm. so i i don't know i don't know man i don't know the most interesting match that i see is the i quit match between edge and finn balor i'm a big edge fanatic dude i'm a big edge fanatic um i freaked i marked out whenever he came out at the royal rumble Mm -hmm. in 2020 i was there in person with my best friend and we both went crazy because we both love edge like it's like the pop that he got man but you know to see him this this he did say a couple weeks ago, when Raw was in Toronto, he did say that this is g- going to be his last year of wrestling, mm. and that he wants to retire next year in Toronto. Okay. So, I don't know. I feel like we could have got more out of Edge, but I understand. He, he did a, go through that injury, though. Yeah, he, he had a back injury. You know, he's I don't know how old he is right now. He's like in his forties. Yeah, uh, somewhere around there. Yeah, you know, just with a back injury like that, with wrestling how it is, you know, he. It is what it is. Yeah, I, I mean, you can't do nothing. I understand when he why he would want to retire. Now, the, I call this a hot take, but I feel like they need to get rid of the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. <laughs> why? Because it's not extreme. They're saving the best for for the next pay-per-views. Yeah. But I don't I don't understand. They took Extreme Rules from e- the ECW deal, so it's like <laughs> at that point, it's not even extreme and plus the logo is whack. Well, I mean, that's that's the marketing department. You got to talk to them about that. <laughs> it's so, like, <laughs> just go back to TV 14. Oh, my gosh. Like, I I miss that. I miss going and watching wrestling whenever it was TV 14. Times have changed. Yeah. I know it's on AEW, but it's, it's just not the same. Mm-hmm. It's just not the same at all in my, in my book. Now... Going back on AEW, do you, are you a frequent watcher on it, of AEW? I watch it every now and then. Okay, so you're aware of like, obviously, you know, we shed some light on the Bucks, mm-hmm. Punk, and you know that whole fiasco that happened in Chicago a couple weeks ago. Yeah. On the TV side of things, John Moxley, mm-hmm. he's the man. Yeah, he is. I think he's the he's the big star right now. You know, with everything going on right now, he's the only one that, from what I've seen, isn't really involved in that. You know, he's, he's a champ for a reason. For he's the AEW World Heavyweight Champion for a reason. I think he's their big name. You know, and then, you know, probably they're probably gonna focus more on him right now. And so, you know, wait to see, wait to see what's gonna happen with him. You know, what do you think about Impact Wrestling? <laughs> um, Impact, uh. I mean, it was okay back in the day, kind of, you know. You, you don't keep up with it today? I don't think anyone keeps up with Impact right Really? Now. That's what I mean. The Bullet Club makes the occasional appearance in it. Yeah. Because they open up that door with, you know, New Japan and stuff. Yeah, but Impact kind of like, it was a, it was big, like, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago when there was only WWE left after WCW and ECW closed. Dispersed, yeah. So, I mean... They were okay for that time because they were the only ones there. But, you know, once once more wrestlers started going from TNA to WWE. Yeah, once they made that transition, it yeah, was, you know, was, raps. Yeah, they started taking all their their talent. They were making TNA great and everything. So and then AEW came up. Now, <laughs> yeah, it's, now no one even knows. Yeah, who knows what's you know. going on, to be honest with you. Um, have you played the video game, WWE 2K? I have not. I've been wanting to. It I have not played the game yet. It looks very interesting. I haven't played it. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't either. I, I haven't played it. I've seen videos of people playing it. Uh, looks very interesting. Mm-hmm. I want to play it. I've played 
some WWE games every now and then, but the last one I heard, uh, what was it, 2020, right? Because they skipped 20. Yeah, they skipped. Yeah. yeah. And they said 2020 wasn't really that great of a game. No, it wasn't. People said so. And I've been hearing good things that 2022 is uh, has become just a better game from the last one. You know, they expanded more on things. You know, they got freaking Scott Hall in there. You know, and they have the the cool little. I I like how you have like uh, the WCW ring in the yeah. game, and it kind of has that same filter. Yeah. If you watch like old WCW videos from like back in the day, it has a like old smoky filter. Yeah. To it, so that was that was pretty cool in that game when I saw that. Um, you can change their outfits and everything from different eras. So that's pretty cool. I mean, the thing about wrestling is is that it's always changing now. Now, I mean, what I mean by that is AEW changed a lot of stuff in the wrestling business. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we spoke on this earlier. WWE stick to itself for the longest time. And that's because of the people that were in charge of it. Mm-hmm. Now, they're gone. He's gone. Mm-hmm. You bring in Triple H. You bring in uh, his creative talent and his, you know, direction and, you know, Digger. everything along those lines. He's bringing back the old NXT. Yeah. NXT is a developmental deal for the WWE. That's like their minor league, so to speak, mm-hmm. for the people that don't know. And think about all the people that, brought, that were brought up in the NXT, what they're doing right here, right now. Yeah. So... And now through Triple H because he used he ran NXT, mm-hmm. the black and gold. Mm-hmm. So it kind of thinks to yourself what he did down in NXT, he's doing up here because NXT was yeah. really entertaining for a small period of time whenever that was going on. I know a lot of people like that more than they did Raw. Exactly. Smackdown. And SmackDown. And yeah. speaking of SmackDown, how do you feel about SmackDown being the new A show? Because they got that deal with Fox. Mm-hmm. They're on a national you know scale bigger national scale mm-hmm. whatever smackdown a show I, that's crazy to me i always thought smackdown was just a side project you know or but it was also that that at times it was also good yeah it was good but you know i like raw i still like raw i think everyone likes raw more than they did more than smackdown no oh, facts Monday Night raw is the <laughs> where it's at yeah I now do you think they're going to be doing a draft again anytime soon, or do you think they're just going to merge all the superstars? Probably going to merge. Super, I mean, they only did a draft like what that one time when they made a big deal out of it. You know, I don't, I don't see them making a whole whole draft. Again. See, I like the whole draft concept though. I like it. I like the <laughs> brand split. I like how each titles have their respective shows like for example the universal championship in 2016 was on raw the WWE championship was on smackdown and they were live on tuesdays yeah back in 2016 mm-hmm. and that felt really genuine and authentic because hey these cats are on smackdown these cats are on raw well what are we doing here I felt, I felt like i was you know back in 2005 2006 watching the show mm-hmm. saying oh my god well you know what the only time they're gonna merge is on the big pay per views. Yeah. So I kinda got a kick out of that in twenty sixteen. Mm-hmm. As of now, I kinda agree with you where you're at right now because they don't need a brand split. Everybody's on every on the show. Like, how can you be the SmackDown World, you know, women's champion and you're on, you're showing it off on Raw? Yeah. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make no sense. They show up, you know, a lot in each one. So I don't really think that there's gonna be any did you hear about uh, Survivor Series? This year's Survivor Series. No. Well, what was going on with that? They're doing war games oh, yeah. at Survivor Series. Ah, war games, okay. So uh, instead of the Survi- traditional Survivor Series match, they're doing mm-hmm. war games. Again, who introduced war games into the WWE? First, Triple H. Mm-hmm. He had NXT TakeOver war games. Yeah. Survivor Series weekend. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember. A couple years ago. Mm-hmm. I think I heard something about So, it. yeah. So, Triple H is the person that actually introduced the War Games deal. Mm. I mean, he, obviously, they took it from WCW because WCW used to do it back in the day. Mm. But Triple H was the first person to implement that in the E. Mm. And he started it on whenever he was running with NXT, and now he's bringing it up to the main roster. And I think that's yeah. pretty freaking cool. They're going to have two rings, and it's <laughs> going to be one gigantic cage that's going to be... 
with the ring or uh-huh. on top of the ring, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be crazy. It's mm-hmm. gonna be crazy. So yeah. we'll have more on that. I'm pretty sure we'll probably get on another show. We could do probably more stuff with the big four pay per views because hey, Survivor Series that's a big pay per view in my book. So. I've been to Survivor Series. Have you been to Survivor Series? I've never been to a WWE show. Get out of town! To no one. way, man. I mean, they don't really come here to Houston, as far as I know. Well, last time they were in Houston, I was out of town. I couldn't go. I was kind of bummed out. Uh, Monday Night Raw came here. Uh, I've, I've, never, I've never been. The first that. WWE show they had, mm-hmm. like, post-pandemic, when everybody was in, like, you know, <laughs> fans and whatnot, it was here in Houston. It was SmackDown. Okay, so it was like <laughs> I, I, I think they're I think they're gonna start coming here more, dude. Like for real. You think? Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Hopefully, if they do, I I think I might go because. Oh, dude, always, it's amazing. I want to go to a WWE show. You know, it's, I've it's, never been to a WrestleMania. You never been to a WrestleMania? Mm-mm. Oh. I wasn't there seventeen. I wasn't there for <laughs> twenty five. The past two, I wasn't. I didn't go to Dallas. Mm. I, was like, I didn't go to the one in New Orleans. They had one in New Orleans a couple years ago. I don't know if you remember that one. Yeah, I remember that. Um, the last one was in. Uh, it was here in Texas, right? Yeah. Then when when Cody Rhodes yeah, showed up. That was that was in uh, Dallas. Dallas. Okay. Yeah. My friend went there. Yeah. I now I, I would have loved to go to that one just to see Cody Rhodes come back, just to hear how crazy it was and everything no yeah i heard that pop was crazy in person man crazy crazy in person um anything else you want to say about uh wrestling uh we can talk about the tales in the territory oh yeah so yeah tales of the territory so for the people that don't know what tales of the territory is it is produced by the rock and it's also produced by the same producers that made dark side of the ring Mm -hmm. dark side of the ring is a would you say biography series i would say it's uh yeah it's a biography series on the most darkest times in the wrestling world so to speak very interesting it's on vice tv i'd really check that out because it's a lot of insights and a lot of stories that you don't know happen mm-hmm. in the in the those times yeah it's now tales of the territory goes back to the golden age of wrestling it's, it's more of a positive note but mm-hmm. the production that it has, yeah. if that's the same production as a, as Dark Side of the Ring, you know it's going to be good, man. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I, I love the show and how they had, you know, the actual people there, and then they had the actors portray them, portray them, and everything. And that was, that was pretty cool watching that. Um, I, I love Dark Side of the Ring. It's one of my favorite wrestling shows. If anyone ever wants to get into wrestling. You know, and wants to know more about the history. I would say watch that show because they really go in depth about all the little backstage stuff that happened and, and whatnot. So it's really interesting that show. And I haven't seen Tales from the Territories yet, but uh, when I get home, I'm going to watch it because uh, I was planning on watching it, but I missed the episodes that started. But I think the first one talks uh, about Memphis with Jerry Lawler. No way. Jerry oh King my Lawler. gosh, that's gonna be a good. That's gonna be a good episode. Yeah. I already know. I love Jerry the King Lawler, especially whenever he's on commentary back in the day. Yeah, this, that was a dream team, him and Jr. Him and Jr. It was. <laughs> that is hilarious. Hilarious. Anything else you want to say about the wrestling show before we call it a call it a day? No, I think that's, that's all we can really talk about right now. There's not really anything coming up that's pretty big, other than Extreme, Extreme Rules. Rules. Yeah, because I think AEW has their pay-per-view at the end of the month i believe and Mm -hmm. it's not you know here anytime soon yeah so So. it is what it is man i appreciate you coming on the signal uh sportscast we'll probably be on more episodes talking about wrestling man because i love me some wrestling for sure for sure Sure, i love wrestling (laughs) i always liked it ever since i was a a kid no no cap Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah i'm uh, favorite wrestler was Kane. Back Yours was Kane? Yeah. I was terrified of that guy I whenever love, I was I love whenever Kane. I was small. I love Kane. You know Oh thing. speaking of Kane, the oh. WWE plans on doing the yeah. twenty five years of Kane. I forgot about that. Man, that's I think that's solid. Yeah. Half of the brothers of destruction. Mm-hmm. Come on. Hopefully he comes back in his old old costume if they want to put him back in there, but I, I highly doubt he's I, I would like 
that you know i miss i miss masked up kane now we've seen his face and what yeah 25 years of kane man that's that's awesome mm-hmm. that's awesome awesome thing in my book you can go ahead and follow the signal on tiktok and on instagram at uhcl the signal lots of content on there your boy produces a lot of sports content on the tiktok so y'all go run it up and show love it's really good on there i appreciate that i appreciate that we work hard on that but this has been an episode of the signal sports cast i'm marco alvarado i'm adam martinez and we're out later deuces <laughs>